Carlos, good to see you again at the start of a new season. Um, how would you say your pre-season has been? Uh, positive because it's a real pre-season. We started the work, I think, six or seven weeks ago. Or six weeks ago right now. So this is something fantastic because we have had the opportunity to be working with the players enough time to continue developing the ideas that we want to develop and, and especially that to have enough time to prepare in the right way the official games that are going to come right now. Having that normal pre-season, as you quite rightly describe it, what has that allowed you to do with the players? First of all, to work and work going like trying to progress in the right way because sometimes when you don't have much time to be working, Sometimes you don't give, you are not making the right progression in the work and you try to very fast to, to show the, the intensity in the team. And sometimes you, because you try to perform very fast, you take the risk about the injuries. But now I think the precision have been fantastic in this, in this, uh, in this balance between the performance that we are looking for and the, the risk to don't beat the limits of the players and to don't lose them. Because it's very important for every player, try to add a lot of work in the legs, try to add a lot of work in the minds too, and don't miss any player during this period of time has been something for me very, very positive. Has it been an added benefit for you as well that your new players have arrived at the club early in the pre-season? So an opportunity for them to further understand what you and your coaching staff want to achieve? With any doubt, but more than just to let them know our ideas is to allow them to, to be working the relation with the new teammates that they are going to, to work so just for me, for these two points, as soon as we add players from the first day of the precision, for me, it's something fantastic, something very positive because they start to work in the relation that they need to be looking after in the, in the game. Of course, they want to add the mentality and the style of the team and the values of this club with more time. And for me, this is something that was fantastic and one very good work from the club that I have received. How would you assess the transfer activity that the club has achieved so far, Carlos? I think one of the conclusions that we did after the last year was to, to try to add more professional players or players with more experience and trying to, to cover very well all the position in the pitch. And I think as a club we are doing, it was a clear that we needed one keeper and we need, with Lini Coles, we are at this, this option that we have now as a goalkeeper. It was clear that we need, after Stillman and Schindler or, or players that were, or Kio, Play that were playing in the back, they leave the club. It was clear that we needed a, a central back. And with Matty Pison, we have covered this position too. In the right side, the last year when people have some problems, especially after the Mako left the club too, it was necessary to, to cover this position. And with, with Turton, we did. We were suffering the last year to maybe to don't find the right left back to, to keep one good level in the left side when we lost uh, to follow in the last part of the year and with Rufus for me is amazing, a very good player to, to can support and give one alternative more to this position. With Rhodes as a striker was another position that with the injury of Danny Ward the last year, uh, only we have as a real Olson Campbell and after at the end of the year we had Sanogo, but now without Sanogo we need to add another striker there and we did this with Rhodes. So for me, as a club, from the club point of view, I have received the word that Lebron B and all his people were doing this summer, trying to recruit the right players, giving more options to the coach, and at the same time do this work fast to let them, to make easy the integration of this player uh, to the team, to the values, to the mentality, and to the philosophy of the, of the club. In terms of that recruitment, as you talk of, Carlos, is that your work now done as a football club or do you expect any more players to arrive at Huddersfield Town before the summer window closes? I think we have done one good part of the work that we needed to do and still we are open to see what are going to be the improvement that we need to do as a club to, compete, uh, to be a more competitive club. And that further part that you speak of, is that dependent on players leaving Huddersfield Town to allow players to arrive? Not necessary. I think it's the balance between both things. First of all, uh, as a club, we have our targets. We have our points that we want to improve the, the team. And at the same time, any movement that can happen during the market, because we know that the market is open, of course, we will find for the best solution uh, from the, our perspective. It's clear that you identified very early where you needed to strengthen at the start of this pre-season that you have done. But where else do you feel that you need to further strengthen in this squad? 
this is a conversation that I did and I had with the club. It's something that for me need to be more private because we know that the market and have to be something that between yes, in the organization of the club. But it's clear that still we are looking for positions that are going to make us stronger in the in the year. Do you expect any players to leave the football club this window, Carlos? Everything can happen in the market. If I don't expect this, it will be will be a mistake from me, from my perspective, because we know that some of our players have an interest, different interest from, from outside clubs, and other players are in different personal situations. So everything can happen during this market. That's why we need to be continue keep working, continue keep coaching the players that something can happen in the, the market that is an option for us. Then this is going to be one word that we will keep until the until the end. I'm sure you're aware of reports suggesting that there is interest in Lewis O'Brien from your old club Leeds United. Is that interest true? Being honest, I don't know, but I understand that any any club, especially club, but for me, are in Premier League, being interested in in O'Brien because for me, he's a player that with his age and the performance, the his contribution, and his mentality, I understand that different clubs are interested in, in one player like him. So as a club and as a coach, you aren't in a position to categorically say that he will be a Huddersfield Town player at the end of this summer transfer window. I want that. You are talking about O'Brien? Yes. I want. I think that O'Brien represents very well the values of this club. O'Brien has been an, an important player. He's one academy player. For me, O'Brien is one example about what we want to create in this academy. Player from the from they are young players playing in this club and they are growing with the team, they are growing in the club and they arrive to be an important player in the first team. And I think it's the best example that, or one of the best examples that I find here in the club. Then is one very important player for us and we will try to do all our best to keep the player in the team. Looking ahead to Sunday, first and foremost, team news wise, how are you? How I am about the, the game of Sunday. The squad, the squad. How is the squad? Ah, the squad. Now uh, we only have some some players with some players. It's like uh, we have two COVID cases in Emon Green and in, in Fraser Campbell. Both were out of the team during 10 days or 12 days. And they are I am gonna follow with them, or they are following the protocol of the medical staff, and they need to return to his activity little by little. So they are not going to be involved in the team because both players were involved in one COVID uh, situation. After, during the, during the pre-season, some of the players have the self-isolation because they couldn't, they had some contacts and directly with, with the, some COVID cases, but fortunately they didn't have the, the COVID, but we now have to follow. And our medical department is very strong in the mentality that we need to follow, of course, this type of protocol. So, for example, play like uh, Koroma was missing some trainings, not because he had the COVID, because uh, he was close to someone that had, and we need to, to follow the medical advices. After, the only two injuries that we have had during this precision was uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron Rowe, who arrived at start the precision with one small pain in the, in the foot. And with the training, he started to feel more pain. And now the medical staff stopped him, start to make some, some, they start to make some proof or some medical yeah. tests. Test. And they are watching that he had a, a problem and still is going to have a couple of weeks or 10 days. He's not going to be in the next 10, in the next 10 days with the, with the squad. He was missing the last three weeks of training. And that's why we didn't watch him to play any of the friendly games that we have played so far. And the other player is uh, Rolando Arons, was one player that started the precision with a small uh, pain in the knee. And this pain with the pass of the training started to increase too. That's why the medical advice was to stop him. And they continue, he continued be watching or working with the medical staff and he didn't train in the last uh, three or four weeks. He wasn't involved with the team. And it's the only new that I think that we have right now. Because all the other players, every player who started the precision still in a good position. We didn't have so far any muscle problems that are the more common problems in the precision, something that is for me fantastic and very positive. And it showed the level of adaptation of the players to the dynamic. And is for me the consequence to have a more long precision where we can manage better the impact of the training in the players. Mm. Just going back to those two COVID cases, Carlos, if I'm right in saying, Fraser Campbell and Romani Edmonds-Green, the, the two that you mentioned, yes. 
Can you put a number on how many players have been affected by the fact that they were close contacts of those two COVID cases and subsequently how long they will be out for? No, in total we have the, they were in contact not only with them, but with the different people that they can have contact outside. It was all Josh, was, uh, Josh Coroma, Rhys Brown and Chris Lowe. These three players, they were out of the team. We have to separate them and they couldn't be, make a training during some days and they were training by themselves during one period of the pre-season, during around 10 days, because it's the medical protocol that we need to follow. Then, but they were the only players that were involved in this type of situation. But any of these three players that I told you, they had COVID. So they didn't have COVID, only fresh Campbell in the morning. Jamie, just okay. as a point of clarity there, those yeah. three players have been back with us and played at Fleetwood. Right, okay, thank you. That's Not fine. a current thing that happened about a week and a half ago. Just for Thank clarity. you. That's great. Um, and just on that game on Sunday, Carlos, um, it, was, it was your decision, along with Sheffield Wednesdays, to, to bring it forward. So, so why was that? I think because it's positive to give a lot of importance to this game, to don't introduce the game during the week uh, of the league. So it means that for me, we are going to be more concentrated, more focused when we are playing the league in the league, when we are playing now the cup in the cup. Something very important, of course, our desire is to keep playing the, the cup. We go with all our mentality to, to make the most serious game that we can make, knowing that is, for me, I cannot say that this game is the last game of the preseason because for me, the last game of the preseason was free vote, and now we are going to start the competition. We start, we are not going to start the competition with a league game. We are going to start the competition with a cup game. That is going to be a very good challenge for us, a very good test for us about in which point we are to face the competition, the league. But of course, we go with all the determination to face this game in the best way that we can that we can face. So for me, move this game allow us to be more concentrated in the cup right now, and after to be more concentrated in the league as soon as the league start. How will you approach the game finally, Carlos? Will you try and put out what you perceive to be your best team, or will you look to try and rest players with that league opener the following week? I tell uh, you that we go with all our mentality to try to pass in the cup and to continue playing this very nice competition, one competition as a club we respect a lot. We know that the last year didn't work well for us the, the, the cup and we want to change this dynamic and we want to start really well the official games this year. Thank you, Carlos. You're welcome. Thanks, Jamie. Dave Hartick, we'll come to you next, please. Carlos, what constitutes a good pre-season for you? Is it just purely fitness or are you looking for certain patterns in the team? These two points together, for me, the fitness level is to be ready to compete in the games, develop one style to compete in the games, develop one mentality to be competitive team in the in the league. So for me, it's like the plus of all these points that can be important for one team. And we've seen both goalkeepers involved quite a bit. Do you have a? Is Ryan going to stay as your first choice, or is Lee going to get the shirt from the off? I will make the decision, you will see in a couple of days, who's going to be the, the first goalkeeper choice. And then I always evaluate what the players are doing with us. I always evaluate what the player can, can offer to the team. We are in a positive point of view from the goal because we had some experience in Nikos because Nikos is a keeper with 27 years old that even he didn't play in championship yet, he has enough maturing experience to be playing a, a, an important competition that was the, the league one for him. And we know that Schofield, we are evaluating Schofield as a one mature keeper, but it's true that he's one keeper with 21 years old. So we know that he's a, a young keeper that during the second part of the league uh, happened the opposite that Linikos was suffering. Linikos was playing the first part of the competition the last year, and he was just focusing the training the second part of the competition the last year without playing enough uh, competitive games. And with Schofield, we have just the opposite. He didn't play the first part of the year, the, the last season, and he was competing all the second part of the league. It means that when you are competing a lot, you don't have the same time to train. And it's clear that uh, Schofield is one keeper that with his age, he needs to continue to develop, something that he is awareness and something that is part of his mentality to try to continue improve. And then I have two keepers that arrived to this point in different type of situation. One that was competing more, but training less. One that was training more and, and competing less. But uh, I think the situation in the goal is much positive from the last year. Okay. Um, and where are we with Pippa? I know he played um, He played his first minutes in the, in the last friendly. Is his fitness coming on well? 
No, I think with Pipa, I forget to tell you that uh, he's not going to be involved in the next game because he only was working one week before to play the okay. Sufribo. That's why we give to him the first 45 minutes. He continued having pain from the last year, something that he was uh, following the, the different type of uh, the advices of the doctors. During the summer, he was receiving some treatment, but the treatment didn't work in the way that we wanted to work. We tried to be the more consecutive, the, the doctors tried to follow the more cons, uh, conservative. Yeah, conservative, yeah. conservative yeah. way to manage this injury without making any surgery or something like this. And in the moment that he came back to the group, he still feel the pain. It was important to test him in a real uh, competition game. That's why he was playing the 45 or 60 minutes versus Fleetwood. But after the feeling that the player had after the game was that he still have pain. Is one pain that we need to try to solve because you know we are not going to watch again the, the best level of people. So right now, yesterday, he was following the, the medical treatment. He's going to be out of the team in the next four or five days. And after these four or five days, he needs to little by little to adapt again to the levels to come training normally in the, in the, with the team. Okay. Um, and just a last question for me for the minute. What's it like having Michael Heffley back in the club? He's obviously an extremely enthusiastic presence, but having him as a member of your backroom team who's come from town's most successful side in recent history must be a, a bonus. I think it's positive always to see how the players love Huddersfield when they are not in Huddersfield. It means many things about the club. I know it's people that have won the respect of the fans and it's not easy when you win the respect of the fans for some reasons. So always it's important to have in the club people that can, can help to keep uh, showing and developing the mentality that these players, as a player, show when they were uh, when they were players in the in the club, I know that he still is only 30 years old, and it's a pity that he, for different uh, injuries problems, have had to to finish his career as a player because he was a, a very good player. That I remember him very well. Even if, if I didn't work with him, I was playing against him or I was watching him when he was in, in high field in one of the most successes uh, years in the in the history of the club. So when the people after leave the club, wants to come back to the club, it says for me a lot about what they feel is for them and how important this club is for these people. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Stephen, do you want to add anything at this stage? Are you okay? Yeah, if I can, please. Um, Carlos, when we spoke at the end of last season, you said you wanted to go away and assess where things had gone wrong in the second half of the season. What did you find when you when you did that assessment? Two important things for me. First one, that we needed to have a more deep squad, more options to play, because in the second part of the season, for me, the team suffered a lot the, the injuries. And maybe we didn't find the right uh, alternative to the play that they were playing at the beginning of the year. And at the same time, I think part of these injuries were because we accumulated many minutes with the same players, because we didn't find maybe enough the, the deep of the squad. Right now, for me, the team have more alternative in each position. It's something that is fantastic. So it was for me one of the first conclusions that I, I did after the after the first season working here in Huddersfield. The second one is like we are a team that I don't have any type of that, that as a coach. I need to improve the defensive uh, way or the defensive part of the team because it's true that we were the, the team who conceded more goals in the championship. And it's something that I don't want that we repeat this. Of course, there are different reasons why we consider these type of goals and I need to be working in what is our best way to avoid this situation because for me as a coach it was something that I needed the feeling and the, I have the determination that we needed to, to improve. Of course, we have signed more players and I can say that the first point to have more options to play in each position is being done and we are going to continue improving our squad. And of course, the second point is something that we are going to test and we are going to be watching with the official games because we want to be one team more solid in defense because it was one of the conclusions that I I did after the first year working here. Can we expect to see any sort of tactical changes based on the assessments you've done of last season? I think so. I think so. If you analyze the games that we have played so far, I think there are differences in, in the way that we are how we are defending. Yeah. And a couple of players we've not seen uh, this summer as well, uh, Janinia Bakuna and Isaac and Benza. W what's the situation with them? I I want to manage the situation in the same way in the same way that I managed the situation with Grant one year ago. 
So both players, I know that both players have different interests in, or from, from different clubs. And it's one situation that I leave between the players and the club to, to solve. My perspective and my point of view as a, as a manager, or as a head coach, is to be working with the players that I know 100% they are going to be in the next year. So with this player, like you say, and Ben Zobacuna, it's one situation that need to solve between the players and the, and the, and the club to be watching one of the different type of interest and to make the, the necessary agreements. And I will be just working and develop and playing with the players that I know that are going to be with us in the next year. Okay. We've had a new signing this week. Uh, Daniel Sinani has, has joined the club. What, what do you expect him to bring? I think Sinani is one player that didn't have, of course, didn't have the experience to play here in England. So he's going to be the, the first club because after Norwich signed him, they put a lot in Belgium and he was playing in, in Belgium. So it's going to be the first time that he's playing in England, one different for me, football, in different of the all the countries that he was playing in, in his country, Luxembourg or, or, or after in, in Belgium. So I think he's one player who can fit really well to play in the three different positions of the of the attack. He can play on the right side, he can play in the middle, he can play on the left side, watching that he's one attacking player. I imagine him playing more on the right side than in the left side, and I imagine him playing more in the right side than as a number 10 even if he feels comfortable playing these two positions. And I think it's a player that needs to give us the, to have one more some more of one attacking player, one striker. So we have to be someone with a striker mentality that have more impact in the last third of the pitch, because for me, it was one of the points that we need to, to improve from the last year or from the pre-season. So I think with him, we hope to be working with him that allow us to have more time the ball, allow us to progress better in offensive half and of course be one aggressive players in the last third of the pitch that allow us to create more chances, increase the number of chances and the consequence when you increase the number of the chances that you have more options to score goals. Yeah, I mean, I think last season the, the centre forwards, maybe a lot of fans felt didn't get enough goals. Um, are you happy now with the options you've got, particularly with adding Jordan Rhodes, adding Sonani, uh Danny Ward hopefully will be fit this season, Fraser Campbell still around. Do you feel like you've got better options and are going to get more goals out of your number nine this season? It was clear that the last year for me was suffering a little bit the, the injury of Danny Ward because all the planification that we did at the beginning was to have just two strikers, was Danny Ward and and, and Fraser Campbell and the option to don't have and Danny Ward for me affect a lot of the team. So Danny was so far is something very positive. He started to work from the first day in the precision and he didn't have any type of problem so far. Then that's why for me we are going to watch the best, or I expect to watch the best of Danny Ward in this in this in the next season that is coming now. Then at the same time, we add Rhodes, one player with a lot of uh, experience in the competition, one player with experience in our club too, one player that I know that the fans love and I know when the fans love one player, there are many reasons in the in the back of this type of situation. So for me, have to be one of the players that add this option that every striker need to add. It's very important. The other day, for example, I was reading one conference of Simeone, one of the best coaches in the world, and he was saying that it's not important if the team only defends very well, it's not important only if the team attack very well, at the end, you need goals to win the games and you need goals to be winner team. And it's true. And now, our all the players that play in the last part of the piece, they need to take the responsibility to concrete the chances that we create. And all the team need to be involved in the goal. I know that our attacks are going to start in the keeper. Our defense are going to start in our strikers. But it's important to work the mind of our striker players to be involved in this type of situation because we know that football are goals and the results are going to depend a lot in the goals that you score and the goals that you don't concede. I know, um, I think Jordan would probably admit he, he didn't have the best time at Sheffield Wednesday in terms of his his goal scoring record. What has the club seen in Jordan Rhodes that that makes him think that that he can get back into form at the John Smith Stadium? I know that Rhodes is a striker with a lot of instinct of a striker inside to the box. He's someone that likes to be in the box. He's someone that, what I was watching him from he was playing in before, well, after he was playing here. I know more him from the year that he was in Norwich. And I think he's a striker that he has this instinct. He's looking always to arrive to uncomfortable position for the defenders, always trying to attack from the far central back to the to the box. And he's someone that every time he has option inside to the box, he's someone who can score goals. So I think this is some of the points. And I think his character and the love 
that he or the feeling that he has in this club are another of the point that I think the, the club evaluate to, to bring him as a player to make to repeat the impact that he was doing here in, in Huddersfield. And I know we're going into the cup, but you obviously will have targets for the league for this season. <laughs> but what are your hopes for the season ahead? Make the best team that we can make, make the stronger squad that we can make, play with the stronger style that we can do in attack and be the most solid team that we can be in defence. And after this, go game by game, showing this mentality. So there's no sort of position target or anything like that. It's just all about performance at the moment. I think I was very ambitious to, to what I told you. I would like to, to arrive to this point, <laughs> to every game show special mentality, solidity, uh, solidity in defence, aggressiveness and brainness in attack, and to be consistent with this mentality game by game that is a high, high challenge for us. Great stuff. Thanks, Carlos. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Stuart, thanks for your patience. We'll come to you next, please. No problem. Hi, Carlos. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Can, can I just ask you, for the last months of last season, it was obviously very difficult, lots of injuries, the pressure of the relegation zone. Does, does it feel a bit more refreshing to have, have had the chance to have some time on the training ground and, and start again? And, and will we see the team playing more like the way you want it to play than maybe we, we saw last season when you had to sort of find solutions at, at short notice? I think for me, it wasn't a month, maybe it was a hard or a tough two or three months. So it was a long time where, where the team was suffering. But every time for me, you beat one difficulty like that one. I think everyone is stronger and everyone after suffering this type of situation are going to change a little bit the mentality of everyone that was involved in this process. So it's true that we wanted to recover the things that for me were positive of the team from the beginning of the last year. We were watching many of these things, but at the same time, improving the things that or the weaknesses that we were showing the, the last year. That's why for me, our mind is to be solid in defense this year, at the same time aggressive too. And to be dominating the games, continue showing the, the aggressiveness that we were showing in the last third of the piece to create many chances, to have many opportunities to score the goals. So the general idea would be like to try to reduce the weaknesses that we were showing because we were showing so weaknesses. And I am responsible of many part of these weaknesses that we were showing and be improving our strong points to be a more competitive team. And you talk about being solid in defence, but being aggressive as well. Is, is Levi Colwell an important part of that as a as a, a aggressive, adventurous defender? I think every player is going to be important to get this from the strikers to the keeper, from the keeper to the central backs, to the midfielder, to everyone. So for me, this is more like a identity, an idea or about the style that every player needs to, to play with these ideas in the mind. So it's not going to be only Colwell the player that is going to bring us this to the team, have to be from every player that we are in the pitch to show that we have these ideas that we are going to defend as a real unit, that we are going to help a lot between us to be to give this level of defensive uh, defensive structure, and from this grow with the team, trying to respect our idea to go to any pitch to attack and to show our style, but at the same time uh, to be a, a, a team that be difficult to beat. And as you mentioned to Jamie, you've been fortunate that you've been able to get players in early, do a lot of work with them. Um, are you confident now that your new players understand the mentality and the philosophy um, of the way you're trying to play? I think as soon as you select well the players, this process is easier. When you are making a selection of the players, when they have the, the real mentality that the club wants, for me, it's easier to, to adapt them to the club uh, or to the squad or to the team. So I think the, the work that Lee Bromby and his people was doing for me was fantastic because they were doing the selection of the player. They bring this type of player to the club and I received this player to work with them from an early or a, a good time to be working with them. So for me, it's been something that is fantastic for us. And I know Lee handles the, uh, the transfers rather than you, but there's been some talk about Tom Lee's arriving. Is there anything you're able to tell us about that? I will talk any necessary thing when any player be here. You can ask me about Sinani because he's the last player. You can ask me about Linikos or, or, or Mati Piz or any player that we bring here to the club. But uh, still, of course, we are looking to improve different positions in the pitch. And I will talk about anything that you want to know as soon as we have the players here for the respect of the players, of the clubs, of everything that can happen from now to the end of the market. 
and just just finally from me how how do you expect the team to be to be better this season how when when we're judging how your teams improve what what sort of things should we should we look for i think we should be watching first of all our competitive mentality we need to be watching one team that is competitive in the pitch one team that even with adversity happen in the game because football is football always i would like to be watching one team that never is going to give up always going to try to change the, the adversity to to be in the game at the same time, like I told you, we need to defend better than we were defending the last year. So I want to see one more compact team in some moments of the in some parts of the pitch and in some moments of the games too. And I would like to continue watching the team that is playing with a lot of determination to have the ball, to control, to attack the offensive half and to create all the chances that we can create in the game without putting the risk of the of to receiving many contractors after because we want to attack. But always could be a good balance that allow us to, to defend well the option of the opponent is going to try to get. So I think this is the point that I would like to, to watch and I would like to have this year. Great. Thank you very much for your time, Carlos. You're welcome. Thanks, Stuart. Alfie, have you got anything you'd like to add? Are you okay? Yeah, just, just a couple of quick ones from me, really, Carlos. Firstly, hi, how are you doing? Very good. You? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Um, you, know, you spoke a lot last season about how intense the, the schedule was and, and obviously the results were were hard to come by during the second half of the season. Uh, are you expecting this season to be a lot more enjoyable from your point of view? I would like, but it's difficult to, as a coach to, to enjoy um, during the time. So I think championship always is a tough competition. It's clear. It's like this. We are many teams and we are playing many games. So I think we are going to keep... It's true that the last year we are playing all these games in a small uh, gap, in less time, it... Then we were playing many, many games in a row, and it was something difficult to manage, not only for Huddersfield, for the club, but we were suffering for me with this type of planification. It doesn't mean that we are going to join more time now, but it means that we are going to have maybe more time to prepare games because we are not going to play the number of games that we were playing in a row the last year. So now I don't expect watching the, the program of the competition, we are not going to have this type of normal game because the last year we were playing seven games in a row, after one week, nine games in a row. So the competition this year is different. It's going to be tough. It's going to be demanding. But we are going to have, I think, at the end, like a one more more of the competition that is going to extend more the spacing and the days between the between the games. So it's going to allow us to have more time to work with the players. No, that's brilliant. Thank you. Best of luck at the weekend. Thank Thanks, you very Alfie. much, Jim. Good to see you again. Have you got anything to add? Yeah, um, Carlos, it's been a busy summer in terms of acquisitions uh, into the club. Is there a set sort of number in terms of a first team squad in terms of players that you would need for a championship? Is it 23, 24? Is, are you, do you put a number on it? No, I think it's positive always to have a couple of positions, a couple of options in each position. And at the same time, if this second player or this Another, if one player can play in a couple of positions, even if it's better because you are going to suffer less the consequence of any injury or any bad performance. So for me, it's perfect to have a couple of players in each position to always have the one main player and alternative that go moving to the player who's playing the highest level. And at the same time, in this pushing, going to, to in the same level, trying to any decision that I, as a coach I select be the right position because both players in that phase and fight to play the game, both being the highest level that they can be. And Carlos, finally for me, you touched on uh, Levi Cowell uh, coming into the club. Obviously, he's on loan from uh, Chelsea. And there seems to be a, a real good arrangement or history between the two clubs, uh, Chelsea and Huddersfield, in terms of previous loans. Izzy Brown, Trevor, Trevor Chalaba have came in, have done really well as uh, in terms of for Huddersfield. So is there any sort of obligations in terms of Levi's loan from Chelsea? Have Chelsea asked you in terms of in terms of appearances, or is it very much in terms of performance for Levi based and decisions uh, rest no. on how well he's going? No, I only I will be focused to to put the level of Colby in the best level because this is going to be the best for the player and at the same time the best for, for our squad. So my only obligation is try to the same obligation that I have with Sar, that the same obligation that I have with Matty Pearson or with any player that I'm working with, trying to put the level of the play in the highest point that we can that we can achieve. Cheers, Carlos. You're welcome. Thanks, Jim. Mark Walker, great to see you. You got anything to add, Mark? Hi, good afternoon, David. Hi there. Carlos. Yeah, just, just one from me. Um, Carlos, it was such a tough first season for you as a manager in your own right. 
Are you approaching your second season with more confidence, having had to learn so quickly? Or do you feel under more pressure, given where Huddersfield finished in the championship last season? I think the pressure is part of our work and to know how to manage this pressure always is important. I think when you are in a in one club like Huddersfield, it's impossible to be living without pressure, without with the pressure of the football. But it's your own pressure too, because every coach wants to put the team in the in the best position that they can put. I know Huddersfield is a very big club. I knew this from my arrival here to Huddersfield. I know the history of the Huddersfield in the last year. So for me, more than a pressure, this is a high, high motivation. Be working for me in this club is a real pleasure. And I will be making my best every day, every single day that I'm working here, because it's true that sometimes you don't realize about, as a manager, how important it is that you can be in one professional club and at the same time to be in one club like Huddersfield too. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. Guys, thank you, everyone. We'll see a lot of you on Sunday. Thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you. you.